So last week we worked through some of the steps on what it takes to fit new hub cores into these old flanges of the Sarvin style hub. But before we press the flanges on, I need to mortise the hubs for the spokes. So I'm going to do that next. I'm going to jig it up on my hub mortising jig onto the new mortiser that we have built. And I'm going to mortise these for an inch and a quarter spoke. These will have a 5 16 tenon. Now we've looked briefly at this indexing jig in past videos, but this is designed to turn 10, 12, 14, and 16 spoke spacings. Now since there are 8 rivets and 16 spokes, each of the 8 rivets is designed to go through the joint of every other spoke. By doing this, that one rivet locks two spokes at once. So I'm going to tap this into place down to where it feels solid. Then I'm going to actually take it over to the press and push it back out. And so you can see where we have our points of contact that we talked about last week when we were turning the core.
Now I don't normally do this step, but just so you can see the four points of contact, well actually two on this first flange, up against the spokes and then out on the end of the core where again comes into the contact with the flange. But in between those two points, there doesn't need to be any contact. So once the flanges are on, what I need is a pilot hole right through the center of this hub core. It allows me to mount it up onto my stand. So when I put one spoke in each hub, this gives me a handle, so to speak, that I can keep this hub under control when I drill the hole through the center. I'm going to put a 7 8 hole right through the middle. Now there's really nothing accurate about this hole, it just has to go clear through and has to mount up on my wheel stand. This hole will actually get trued up after the wheel is built and I put it on the boring machine. Now these smaller Sarvin spokes generally come in 8 inch increments and as I stated before these are one and a quarter inch Darwin spokes. But they really never fit. These shoulders are at 22 and a half degrees, but as they come, they're usually kind of rough. So I do finish sand them. 
And then I measure the distance of the flange because I want the point of the shoulder where the throat of the spoke and the face of the shoulder comes to about an eighth of an inch out from the flange. So I'm going to mark these and when I put them all down here you can see the variations in the factory finish. They are anything but uniform. So I mark them all out and then I'll run them over the sander and kind of make them uniform. That way they look a whole lot better once they're in the hub. Well fortunately these weren't real far off so it doesn't take too long just to kind of make them symmetrical and uniform to where they fit a little better. Now part of the purpose of the design of the Sarvan hub is that all the spokes shoulder up and support each other, whereas on a common hub they are all separate individual. And so if we look back, these two rusty hubs are the ones that we are working with right now. But you'll also notice there are four other black Sarvan hubs right behind. Well, these other four hubs are the same size as these two hubs that we just put together. I put my calipers on these two and then compare them to one of these other four hubs. You can see they are exactly the same size flange. However, these two sets of Sarvan hubs will show the difference that two different companies can take the same flanges and build two different sizes of wheels. This is the inch and a quarter. And when I try to fit it into the second set of hubs, it's just too small. The second set is designed for an inch and three-eighths spoke. Well, with an inch and three-eighths, the wedge is wider than the inch and a quarter. So I have to modify these inch and three-eighths in thickness of the wedge down to the same thickness as an inch and a quarter, while remaining an inch and three-eighths through the main head of the spoke. So since I already have the inch and a quarter spacing set up on the sander for the inch and a quarter spoke, I'm going to take these inch and three eighths and I'm going to take the wedge thickness of the inch and three eighths, which is too wide, down to the inch and a quarter size.
but in the process of doing this you'll see that the length of the face of the wedge becomes longer as compared to the face of the inch and a quarter. Well, the flange depth from the core to the edge of the flange is still in that one inch area, the same as the first two hubs. So now I have to take and re-throat these spokes so that they are down to the same position of the inch and a quarter. So where I had just a little adjustment to do on the inch and a quarters, now I have a lot of adjustments to do to make these inch and three-eight spokes fit the exact same flange as the inch and a quarter. So there's been a number of questions and comments in the comment section, which I always appreciate. But the question has been asked, well, when you have a standard set of flanges, why don't you just make everything the same? Well, the case was, back in those days, not so different than today, there was a company that made certain parts, and multiple companies bought those parts and then designed and built their own wagons and carriages accordingly. So even though some of the parts were universal, they varied from manufacturer to manufacturer in how they were put together in their production line. So that's part of the challenge of what I get today, is I get to work through all these variations, which seem like they should all be the same, but they seldom are. Well, there's another unique thing that's kind of been popping up these last couple summers since I've been putting these videos up. I have the privilege of getting to meet a lot of folks that are out on the road on vacation and stop by and say hi. And sometimes I have the camera running when folks stop by and, well, I happen to actually catch a few. But whether I have the camera on or not, I really appreciate the folks that are willing to sign their name down onto a guest book that we have. It's kind of fun to keep track of who all shows up. So just a quick thanks for all those that take the time out of their day and on their travels and their vacations for stopping by. It really makes our day and we've met some hey, great folks. I really do appreciate it. So they, but they don't actually start until... Um, Starts on Saturday. Yeah, that's what I thought. We were supposed to report today. Ah, are they going to let you be late? Is American rotted. style. It rotted and it fell. Remember it was new when we put it up there? So thank you for all you folks that stopped by and all you folks at home that keep on watching. I appreciate it. All the videos.